Hey, this is Mike Barnes, the financial first responder. Hey, have you ever thought about why financial risk? And should you even take risk? So for the next few minutes, I'm going to talk to you about risk. And I hope that you pay attention because some of you are starting businesses, side hustles, and you're basically living life taking risk. And we need to discuss some of these risks because as a financial advisor, a financial first responder, a lot of my clients are taking unnecessary risk. And so I thought I would talk about that today. So with that said, let's get started. Here's a definition. It is a definition. It is not the defin definition. And so I suggest that you look it up for yourself. But financial risk is a fundamental concept in finance because it's, it affects the decisions and the outcomes of individuals, businesses, and governments. Here are some reasons why understanding and managing financial risk are important. Now, I'm going to discuss some things with you, and you, some of this stuff you may be familiar with, and some of it you may not be familiar with. But I'm hoping that today you will take a serious look and you'll think about this as you decide to continue to take risks financially. So let's talk about preservation of capital. Now, when we look at preservation of capital, most people are looking at this diagram I have, and you're noticing that one of these kids is not doing the same thing. And so when you're monitoring risk, what you're essentially doing, financial risk management helps preserve capital by identifying and mitigating potential threats to investments or assets. So if one of these kids is not doing, this, do, is not doing the same thing and doing his own thing, that would probably be where you need to focus at mitigating that risk. Um, I notice that a lot of times when business owners are starting out, they don't think about the preservation of capital. They tend to start their business um, up based on a shoestring budget, or they may finance it through personal credit versus business credit. And by the time they get to someone like me, they've already um, exhausted all of their personal funds and really it's because of the lack of education that nobody's ever told them that you need to seek business funding first and possibly use your personal credit now with that said let's talk about what you really need to focus on when you're doing this is your return on your investment so Managing risk can enhance the return on investment by ensuring that the risks are taken in a calculated manner and are commensurative with potential rewards. Now, you've heard me say this before in some of my um, talks, the greater the risk, the greater the reward, the lower the risk, the lower the reward. That is true to an extent. However, as, as a financial advisor, let me say this first. I'm not giving you financial advice without us being into in some form of contractual agreement. So this is not financial advice. But what I'm trying to get you to think about is your return on investment. Like whatever you do, there should be some form of return on investment. And there is a potential for gain and there is definitely a potential for loss. But as a financial advisor or a financial first responder, a financial planner, someone in the financial industry, we have to talk to you about risk and we got to talk about risk mitigation. So with that, let's talk about something that most of you probably are doing right now is you started a business. So business stability. For businesses, managing financial risk can contribute to the stability as well as the suitability especially during economic downturns and unforeseen events. Now, let's let's use the last thing that just happened to everybody, right? Um, the pandemic. A lot of business businesses were not prepared for the pandemic. And if you are a business owner and you're still operating right now, uh, that's probably a great thing. But there were a lot of small businesses that went under because they just didn't know how to handle if something were to happen at that magnitude or that scale. 
And so we have to look at how do you stabilize a business and what is the suitability for your business? Now, the government has programs that they put in place, um, COOPs, continuing operation plans. They have emergency occupational plans. They have all type of stuff that they put in place in the event the government was to have a emergency, such as a pandemic. But why don't we do that with our personal finances or even our businesses? Because we haven't been taught that. It's that simple. And unfortunately, um, most people are, are in the business of selling you stuff instead of educating you. And my job at the, as a first responder or financial first responder is to give you information that you can go back and apply and use and have some ideas of how you can save your, your family and your company. So let's talk about another biggie that most people don't think about, and that is regulatory compliance. Now, many industries are subject to regulations that require the management of financial risk to protect stakeholders and ensure compliance. Now, in my industry, investments, insurance, financial planning, things of that nature, there are governing bodies that actually protect the consumers from would-be um, nefarious acts. So we have continuing education we have to do every year, every two years, depending on what type of license you hold. And so um, having worked in a bank, having worked in insurance companies, having um, started an investment advisory firm, I can tell you there's a bunch of regulation in our industry, but guess what? In some of your industries or your fields, you have regulations too. Some of you have continuing education. Some of you have um, inspections that happen you know, on a, on a yearly basis. Um, if you think about restaurants, they, they get graded based off of sanitation. So this is nothing new. Um, if you own a barbershop or a beauty salon or, you know, say a funeral home or whatever your business is, there is some form of standard for most industries. And so this should not be new to you as far as some form of regulatory compliance. So with that said, what are we saying now? Why, why do you think we have compliance? <laughs> well, here's one good reason. Investor confidence. Now, when we talk about investor confidence, what are we really talking about? Because you might say, well, Mike, I'm not starting an IPO and I don't have investors in my business. This is just my family. So investor confidence is effective risk management can enhance investor confidence and trust leading to increased investment and access to capital. Now, let's talk about this for a second. Let's say that you don't have a business where you are publicly traded. Let's say that you have a private business. Guess who your investors are? Your investors are your family. It is your employees. It's your staff, right? So don't say that you don't have you don't have a need for investor confidence because you could have one bad employee that does something wrong that could hurt your business. Or let's say that it's one bad client that did something nefarious and now is accusing you of something you didn't do. So your, your, your branding, your name, everything is important to you as far as investor confidence. Because to me, outside of uh, God, family, and then business, that, that's normally how it goes for me, but I can't speak for anybody else. But when you start getting employees and you're responsible for paying them a check, you know, once a week, every two weeks, once a month, um, or their yearly salary, then it's game on at that point. So what do we need to be thinking about now, Mike? Well, what about strategic decision-making? Because strategic decision-making is simply this. It's understanding the financial risk and that's crucial for making informed strategic decisions, such as entering into new markets, if you're a business owner, launching a new product, and then acquiring companies. Now, some of you are saying, well, wait a minute, I'm not that big, Mike. I'm, I don't know if I'm gonna acquire a company. Okay, well, let's look at it this way. Let's say that you're a barber, and shout out to my frat brother, Sean, who's a barber. 
one time we were talking about him possibly, um, him and his partner possibly taking over another um, barbershop. That is acquiring another company, even at that level. Let's say that you, you own a beauty salon and you want to put more chairs in. You need to know that you have a market for that. Let's say that you have a law firm and you want to bring on more attorneys. You have to have the infrastructure to do that. Let's say you're a plumber or electrician and you start your own deal. You got to be able to advertise. And is there a need for what service you have? Remember, it's not what you want to do. It's what your clients want you or need you for. Right. So then we say, well, Mike, Mr. Financial First Responder, it's great that we have this strategic decision making process that you're talking about. But where, oh, where will I get or will I have to understand the cost of capital? See, managing financial risk can reduce the cost of capital by demonstrating to your lenders and investors that risk are being managed effectively or unaffectively. So you want to make sure that whatever you're doing financially, you're managing your costs. You know, here, here's a great example. I, my great uncle used to have a grocery store and I talked to him a couple of times of what it was like. And he was talking about you need to always manage your costs, good cost of goods versus what you could actually sell it for was your profit. Right. So a lot of times people don't think about their profit. They just think about what they spend for the item. It does, they don't think about the cost it costs to put it on the shelf, which means you had to pay an employee by hourly wage to put it on the shelf. I used to be a stalker when I was in, in college, worked at a food line. Um, you know, I, I've, I've done a lot of different jobs. I was a bus boy in high school. And so I always looked at business and I always looked at what does it cost to be in business and what does it cost to, to be able to offer a product? So there is a cost of capital that you need to be aware of when you're when you're looking at your business structure. So I know some of you don't have businesses yet. The operative word is yet, Y-E-T. But you need to be thinking about this and you need to sit down with a business consultant, your financial advisor, your CPA, um, someone that has a, a good grasp on finances and say, hey, you know, I'm thinking about starting a food truck or a mobile detail or whatever your business is. How much is this going to cost me? And what do my prices need to be for me to be profitable? Because a lot of times people go in business and they don't think about that. So with that said, the next thing we need to look at is insurance and hedging. Now, see, financial management or financial risk management tools such as insurance and hedging can protect against losses from unforeseen events. So what if you had a business and you had business interruption insurance and the pandemic happened and you lost sales or you had food spoilage or you had um, uh, you couldn't get the products that you needed um, for your clients. So you lost sales that way. What if you had insurance hedging your actual products or your services? What if you had been informed or someone would have told you that you could have did that? Some of these companies would not have went out of business had they known that. Now, it's up to us as financial advisors, financial first responders, to actually give you the information that you need to be successful when you start a business. Because we got to look at the ins and outs and we probably need to learn your business to, to be more effective to help you. Now, you may be saying, Mike, look, I'm just a teacher. I'm just a preacher. I'm just um, a person that works in the um, hospitality industry. I'm just a veteran. I'm just a military person. I'm just a, a police officer. I'm just a firefighter. I'm just a nurse. Whatever your profession is. Some of you have been given God-given talents and you just haven't found your divine purpose yet. But when you do, you're probably going to start a business. 
And just so you know, I learned this from my mentor, Myron Golden. In the Bible, during those times, there were three types of people. There were the slaves, there were the soldiers, and there were business owners. In fact, everybody had businesses. So, um, or they were slave or they were a soldier. And that's that was the economics. You know, outside of um, a person being a politician, you can go back in history and look. Just go back and look. So with that said, I want you to think about this for a second. The overall managing financial risk is essential for achieving financial goals, protecting assets, and ensuring long-term stability and success of individuals, businesses, and economies. Now, why did I say economies? You notice when we first started, I had a picture of the world up. Now, for those of you that have never traveled, I highly suggest you go places other than the United States because you really need to see how good you got it, okay? But I want you to think about as well is that as an individual, whether you got a business or not, you have a personal economy. Your family has a personal economy. It's what comes in versus what's going out, right? So think of your, your household as a business, right? Even though you may not have a business yet, or maybe you do, I need you to start thinking and operating like you're a business. Now, with that said, let's go to some final thoughts on risk. Financial risk refers to the potential loss of uncertainty or uncertainty that an investment or financial decision may not yield the expected returns. It encompasses various types of risk, including market risk, credit risk, liquidity risk, operational risk, and that's just to name a few. Understanding and managing financial risk is crucial for the investors, business owners, and financial institutions to protect their assets and achieve their financial goals. Now, what I've done is I put a link in this actual slide for you to go out and figure out what your investment risk could be. Click on it. Take the 11 question quiz. Let's figure out together what your risk is. Now, I also would like for you to like and subscribe this video and leave in your comments what you thought. Uh, I take the time to actually put these together because I want to make sure I'm educating people on certain things. Everybody doesn't have an MBA or a financial background, haven't been in the industry for a number of years like me. And some of this basic information, even though it might be basic for some, it's not basic to all. And my goal is to educate people financially so that they can have a better life financially. So until we talk again, this has been Mike Barnes, the Financial First Responder. I appreciate your time. Please like and subscribe and have a great day on purpose.